Riveting content. Empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Sphere Exclusives. Looking for exclusive content from your favorite podcast here at The Sphere? Head over to sphere.tv forward slash Patreon and sign up today. Lady Ari Natural Hair Care. Lady Ari Natural Hair Care has been a prime destination for catering to naturally kinky hair in Houston, Texas. Give the experts a call today at area code 832 265 3792 or book online at ladyari.com. Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Hey, trumpet. what a way to come in with that song. I like the trumpet. Hey, what's <laughs> going on? It's another episode of Intermission. I am Marcus Griffin. You can find me on Facebook at Marcus Griffin as well as Instagram at McGriff the Critic. And joining me at the table, I got the light skinned representative. How <laughs> Yo, what's up, everybody? You threw me off. I'm sorry. Yeah, I wasn't expecting you to say that. What's up, everybody? You can find me at Howard underscore Jerome on Instagram and Howard Jerome on Facebook. Holy shit, I feel like I haven't been here in weeks, man. It has been a while. I, I feel like, like I haven't seen two, you in a while. Weeks? I haven't placed my eyes on you in a while, yeah, sir. That's why my face threw you off, man. Yeah, man, because you had that weird face going on. I'm not saying you have that a weird one? face, but, you know, you had a no, weird... No, it's cool. How your day been going, sir? Bro, it's oh, been busy. 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 Busy, 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 busy. Got this New Orleans trip up on the horizon, so I'm trying to get everything done for What's that. What's that off of? You remember that? I remember a little animated Karen saying, "Busy, busy, busy, busy." Is that on a, a, mm -hmm. a Christmas movie? I, think I don't know. That man. Is off a I'm not familiar movie. with that one. It might be a kid. Movie. It might be a kid show, man. It probably is. I watched too many kids shows. Yeah, but man. yeah, we're rambling. We're going on, but we got a great show for y'all. Before y'all, you know, tune in, share the, share this. On Sh Facebook. This link. Yeah, share the link. All yeah. the people out yeah. there. Share them to everybody. Everybody. Every all your friends, family, people you hate, people you love. Everybody. They yeah, all give need to this. Give it to people you hate, man. Let them see what you be watching. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Erlene. What's up, Jada? Both of them joining in on Facebook Live. Okay. Sorry, we were starting a little late. Top fan popping. Yeah. What's going on? Well, we got Yo, I saw that actually. What? Er, did you see Erlene got a little, a little badge? Top fan? Yeah. Why are you a top fan? Erlene girl? is the top fan of the sphere, sharing? apparently. What you I didn't even know the thing on Facebook, but you would think I should know that. Who right? knows? I Damn. don't know. I don't keep I don't keep up with none of that bull. But yeah, we got a good show for you. We're gonna talk about a little Disney Plus, Star Wars trailer, Game of Thrones. Hell yeah. Man, what, is, what month is this? April? April has been a great month so far. We got so much more damn, stuff to come. April? Yeah, dude. Man, I feel like it's just is flying. It was by. just January. I'm like, God damn. Next time I look, at, look up, it's going to be Christmas. Oh, well, let's get it popping. Oh, God, don't so, remind me of that. straight on the docket. So, everybody knows that Disney Plus has a, a streaming service that's Disney coming out their streaming service. And they have a whole bunch of new content that they're adding. So, a, a bunch of TV shows as well as movies, documentaries, cartoons. And they released a list of the things coming to their platform as well as pricing. Six ninety nine. Now we talked about that earlier this year that uh, their CEO was talking about trying to price Netflix and Hulu out the market, and, and I think they're they're holding true to that. Six ninety nine is pretty that's pretty cheap. damn cheap. That's cheap for that for good the content. content. Marcus, you were telling me earlier that we're going to tell you all that they were talking. Disney is talking about having all their movies after. They hit uh, theater after they do the theater run, going straight to Disney Plus. So that's a huge, huge differentiator. That's something that we've never seen before because that changes the game. So you don't have to wait the layover for what two, three, three, three months. months. Yeah, and you can see that content right away. Let me ask you a question: Do you remember back in the day where a movie came out and it felt like it took a year before you actually got it again? Now yeah. it's like three months and it's dialing back some more. Well, and it's been Disney leading the way with that. I I'm mean, good. they had Black Panther come out and then a month later release it on 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 DVD that's or good. I guess Blu-ray, and then what? Making way for Infinity War, so I mean that's pretty. It is it's definitely Disney trying to lead this innovation with trying to give us a shorter gap for consuming their media all for that that dollar, man. I want y'all. Don't judge me. My phone's gonna be out. I can't. I can't. 
a lot of can't remember all this stuff that's on here. So I'm going to give y'all some, some of the new shows they got going on, which is pretty smart. High School Musical, the TV series. It's pretty smart. That's pretty smart. It, it's going to bring in the young audience. You can give it like a Boy Meets World type of vibe, you know, break out into the Medea song every now and then. they're not going to have any of the original cast. I, I, I've actually never seen an episode of High School Musical, but I feel like... Huh? You mean the movie? It was a movie? Yeah, it was a movie. Well, there you go. Oh, yeah, man. It was good. The first one was good. I oh, didn't like the second oh, never mind one. then. I got no opinion this on that. This is the best <laughs> of all. <laughs> well, hold on. That's, that's Hannah Montana, Montana, wrong place. I don't forget what song they sing. Hey, uh, I just want to shout out uh, Jada. This is what, exactly what I was talking about with Marcus. What? Uh, she, oh, we were talking about how you were in choir, and she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, Marcus was a soprano oh, yeah, in man. choir. Oh, yeah, man. I was, was going to little, little known fact about my co-host here. He's definitely a soprano. A soprano. I can sing all octaves, but yeah, baritone was where I represented it. <laughs> no, no, he's a soprano. No, no, I was number you. twenty-four in, uh, ranked in, in the state of Texas. I was holding it down for male sopranos. Seat one, whatever. <laughs> I was all by myself. <laughs> you have all these women, and you yeah. just see me in the front. Marcus <laughs> big ass over here. <laughs> hey, I was small in high school, man. Hold on, man. Hold on. I'm not playing. But other shows they have on the, um, they have a female Diary of the President, first female president. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, that's one of the good shows that they have released, uh, the, I want to say the title for it. So we know it's going to be a buddy cop film. I, I don't know how much too interested I'm going to be in that, honestly. Not really. Uh, they have the WandaVision. That's one of the uh, interesting shows that I'm interested in, in, in paying attention to. Cause I What's want that to one see, about? That's the one with um, Wanda and the Vision. Uh, what's name? Scarlet oh, Witch. Yo, so I, I, my mind totally went straight to Wanda Sykes. I was like, I <laughs> Wanda Sykes. How are they going to do that on Disney? <laughs> what the hell your ass? <laughs> Bro, it's been a long day, man. I've been going What the hell your ass coming in here, Bro, cycling know, through the, the door? Wanda Sykes, <laughs> did you know that she owns? You watch Blackish, don't you? All the time. So I did not know she owns the company that Dre works at. I was like, when did this happen? 51% owner. Yeah. Okay. Because well, her husband got a divorce and he didn't uh, sign a prenup. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. they threw that out there one episode. I was like, when did this happen? Oh, yeah. Every time she's on it, they make that joke about that. Okay. Uh, also, they have The Mandalorian, which is another good show. Uh, Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars. John Favreau. So to Jarvis's point, we were trying to actually stream this Mandalorian content that we saw it got leaked, but it's a really, really bad bad copy of it yeah y'all can stream it you can go to youtube the mandalorian you can see the little leak thing we're not going to try to uh put that out there but i personally am excited because john favreau you know he's did the lion king like you said iron man as well as elf one of my personal favorites yeah. but it's interesting to see that they're doing an actual star wars tv series based on the uh the mandalorian and also, star and peter pascal yes sir they, that's, so that's, two, that's that's a huge that also lineup. was introduced if for those of you who don't know that or game of thrones fan he is the the red viper was that what they call him the red viper on game of thrones I think it was just the Viper. Oh, uh, the Viper, whatever. Yeah, he's the Dornish Prince. Uh, I can't. I always forget his name. Oberyn. Oberyn yeah, Marcello. and he's the one that was trying to take down Pablo, Pablo Escobar. Yeah, he was a cop. Oh, oh yeah, Narcos. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I lost Howard. Bro, I lost you just, Howard. Can you just jump from Game of Thrones right over to hey, Pablo man. Escobar? Hey man, I might jump the Kingsmen. I may jump to. Uh, <laughs> I forgot what else he played in, but whatever. I think those are the three. But the Mandalorian which is going to be pretty interesting mm. because I, I'm I've always been ready for a gritty. Star Wars TV series where we can kind of get more of the backstory because a lot of people don't watch the animated thing and I personally am a fan of the animated TV show and the animated run and I truly felt like that was where I learned most of my Star Wars knowledge from is watching yeah. those TV shows. That is so, the expanded universe before they got rid of that Before they said, canon, oh, this man. is not canon, but yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's going to be good to see like, some sideline characters, especially with the announcement of the whole saga being over. So, I mean, that's exciting news. So we get to start seeing them flesh out some new characters. And it seems to be the trend with a lot of, like, really beloved series and trilogies and, and sagas and stuff. We're seeing that with Game of Thrones. We're going to start exploring some other characters that we're not Let's get that backstory. with. So, uh, I, I'm always just a little leery about these things. I mean, we saw with um, Breaking Bad how Better Call Saul, even though it's praised as being a good show, didn't really get that much attention. So. It's lost its flair because it didn't have Walter White running around yeah. cooking up that coke. And that's, cocaine and crack or whatever it did. Meth. Well, whatever he did, he, <laughs> one of those drugs it wasn't Blue weed, magic. so I wasn't worried to pay attention. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, I'm definitely excited to see this too because I mean, the Mandalorian, Boba Fett being one of the most interesting characters in Star Wars without having any real backstory. So it'd be good to see the people that he's supposed to be modeled after and all that. So that whole assassins, the whole assassins clan and all that. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then also, you know, I'm a huge fan. Like I was talking about of the cartoon version of Star Wars Clone Wars they're coming out with another season which I'm excited about and we're starting to see Ahsoka's back you see you know Luke all your fan favorite characters mm -hmm. they have a, tra a trailer out there we're not going to play it but you can go check it out I think that's 
pretty good because it's another selling point for why I should sign up to Disney streaming service. Yeah. They coming out with a, a fan favorite uh, cartoon series that was kind of killed off, but they're bringing it back for a lot of those fans, and it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, Clone Wars fans. So that's good that they're bringing that back. The and Monsters at Work one, I'm pretty excited about. The who? Monsters at Work. Oh, I'm a huge mon- yeah. Monsters so, uh, University uh, and Monster Inc. fan. I think Disney did a really good job of how they like. First off, they took some really really huge properties from the, of themselves and decided to make them into some series. That's smart. So it's pretty good because now you're going to bridge the gap of the older generation, and get us to want to go and watch it out of curiosity, mm-hmm. while being able to bring in this younger generation and be like, hey, look, here's a new, a whole new way for you guys to start enjoying this content and making them curious to go back and watch the old stuff. So, I mean, kudos to Disney with that, man. They're, they're definitely going to give Netflix and Hulu a run for their money. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they do a, 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 that for a lot of their animated property, like a Nemo series or mm-hmm. maybe a Toy Story series or maybe, you know, I would personally like to see an incredible series. I mean, that'd be pretty dope. Yeah. They're pretty dope. But, you know, Disney, they're going to do with it. They're going to make all that money. Well, not even with Incredibles. What's his name? Um, uh, you want an up series? N- f- <laughs> no, the guy from The Incredibles, the Frost guy. I always forget his name. Ah, Frozone. Frozone, yeah. Now, if they did a, a, a backstory on him for like a series following him, it's, that it's, would be pretty it's cool. It's basically Samuel Jackson being Shaft and yeah. becoming <laughs> Frozone. <Yeah. laughs> or like a buddy cop with him and Mr. Incredible. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Where's my suit? <laughs> Where's my suit, woman? <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna be interesting. I think that's gonna be pretty dope, as we talked about, as well as them getting the uh, theater run uh, when the the movies are over, mm-hmm. coming straight to the uh, streaming service. I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. I'm gonna sign up for six ninety nine. I mean, that's nothing. I mean, how do you not? It's like a meal at Whataburger. You'll be all right. So one thing I didn't I didn't see. Are they gonna have all their old movies like Lion yeah. King? They're gonna have everything on. They there. have uh, just to name a few: uh, Bugs Life, Goofy Movie, Big Hero Six, all the Star Wars. Good Dinosaur, The Incredibles, Little Mermaid, TV shows, Boy Meets they have World. So much There's content. There's a whole. It's so, so much, much content. content. I'm gonna be stuck on there for a whole. So they're gonna month. have all their Pixar stuff too. Yeah, everything. Jesus. Everything is gonna be on there, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna be talking about it more in depth when we get the trailers out for The Mandalorian, as well as trailers out for whatever else thing they're gonna try to pump out. So we're yeah. gonna be talking about it more and more on this. So you got to watch intermission to see what we're gonna break down and talk about. Man, they're gonna rapidly become one of the biggest streaming services. I can't just wait. so much stuff. Like, I mean, if you just think about what they had on, on Netflix, I mean, some of their shows were some of the biggest properties that were on Netflix. And for them to take those away and put them on their own show, on their own um, platform, that's going to be crazy. And there's two other things also. Kathleen Ken- uh, Kennedy came out and was talking about how they're going to do a Knights of the Old Republican uh, Republic mm. TV show as well as movie. So that's going to be interesting how they're going to interwork and have the TV series and have the movie or whatnot and see how they're going to make that work. That's one thing as well as Kevin Feige coming out and saying that these – the like the Wanda Vision as well as Buck uh, Cap I'm not Cap and Buck Falcon and Falcon uh, and Bucky they're gonna do a it's gonna be post this gonna be post Avengers mm-hmm. so that's gonna be interesting to see what they explore I don't know what stories I don't want to think about it too much I don't put most of my, my that means brain they power can, into they that. can bring back X Men they can bring back all kind of bring stuff, it all man. back bring it all back I, I I personally would love them to bring back the old nineties. Spider Man and X Men and all that. Dude, that was one of the best <laughs> opening, <laughs> best opening. Hey, Nineties had the best, like the intros to TV shows had the best, Damn. some of the best intros. Bro, they can bring back gargoyles. All Do they own gargoyles? Yeah, gargoyles. Oh, that's Fox. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. They could bring that. Bar- oh, they're gonna reboot that. And in- oh, they're gonna. There make was a movie. some rumors God, talking about gargoyles. Like, I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, one of the uh, the guy, the writer was talking about. Was in the news uh, a couple months ago talking about gargoyles and how he didn't think it was the the time period for gargoyles was a little it was a little bit ahead of, ahead of its time. Uh, so yeah, I can believe it. I can believe it. it was a little I mean, bit it touched too on much. a lot of race and. Uh, and uh, they gen- talking about doing gargoyles? Yeah. Oh shit. I mean, just, just think about it. You've got a, a race of creatures that people hate just because. Uh, they look different, and then you have We're a just minority like female cop who is at, she was at, at, Hispanic, at the head detective. Uh, in this area. She yeah. was a hot Latina. <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna. I'm not touching that one. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. But uh, also on, you know, we we wrap that up. Well, I want to say what we're really gonna talk about. It's what everybody's been talking about. Is this Beyonce documentary they dropped. Mm-hmm. Apparently, we all knew that she had something in, in partner with Netflix that she was doing with her Coachella Coachella performance. And I think it's great for the simple fact is many people saw the Coachella performance because it was streamed. A lot mm-hmm. of people stayed up late. I was one of those people that did watch it. I think it's pretty great that it's going to be the behind the scenes of her 
I mean, learning those moves as well as getting ready for it. And where she's also talking about, I want to say they they said they talked about some of her personal life. Dude, she behind dropped the a whole new album with that too. Yeah, I mean, hey man, I'm I'm down for it. Beyonce. Get your coin, girl. Hey, man, I have no hate over here. I personally am not the greatest fan of Beyonce, but there was two performances that she sold me. Uh, where I was like, okay, she's an interesting person that I need to check out more. And it was that performance she had on BT. I think she had like a 15-minute uh, performance. And, I mean, she killed that shit. Yeah. And the Bruno performance at the halftime at the Super Bowl, I thought she was incredible for. So I personally saw those two say, okay, well, I see why everybody's hyped up about Beyonce, why they spend their rent for the next two months for her tickets. But, hey, man, I'm going to check it out, and we're probably going to talk about it just a little bit more in depth next week. It just dropped today, so I didn't get a chance to watch yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch it over the weekend. I mean, I'm not going to be able to avoid it because all the women in my family, every time they come you know to my ready. house. Oh, how are we going to go watch that Beyonce? Put Beyonce on. Put uh, Beyonce on. Like, right. Man, shit, you've seen my sister come over there. Oh, start. yeah, she be getting down. You're supposed to be dancing. My sister's wild. I need to learn to dance moves like your sister, man. I need yeah. to I need swag my game up. Yo, the other one though that I saw that uh, dropped over the weekend, or I guess not the weekend earlier this week, was Guava Island with uh, Rihanna and Child of Gambino. Gambino. Yeah, over on Amazon Prime. So Kristen was I talking have about. No that. idea what the movie's about. Kristen was talking about that, and she came me uh, like kind of a surface level details about how. That, Shout out to hashtag. That, um, Child of Gambino is one of the wealthier people on the island, and it's kind of. That it's dealing with different economic levels or something like that. Hmm. I could be totally wrong. I, I I heard some of it. It was great. A young, right <laughs> young, lovely young girl that we were talking to, as well as in 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 the room. So I was kind of going in between the conversations. But uh, I'm gonna check it out just because. I mean. Everybody keeps talking about it, so I said, I might as well. There's three people I've you, her, and one of my mm. other friends talked about. It, so I'm, I had to go check it out, but. Y'all yep. should go check that too if you got the Amazon Prime. Absolutely, you cannot use my password. You can't use it. You yeah, use it. but uh, this portion of the show is sponsored by the Sphere Exclusive Team. Looking for exclusive content that you can't find anywhere else? Look no further than our Sphere Exclusive, found right here on Patreon. We've got we go beyond the. Excuse me. Oh man, I am super rusty. Uh, Holy shit! It's all good. <laughs> no judgment. We've got behind here. the scenes shots happening daily at the Sphere Podcast Studios. Each show on the podcast network curates episodes that are only delivered to Patreon subscribers. Plus, we deliver the show live from start to finish in our Discord server that's exclusive to our Patreon family. Sign up today at www.thesphere.tv backslash Patreon to join our $2, $5, or $8 Patreon tier and get access to all the exclusive content right here at The Sphere. Now... It's like riding a bike, man. You oh, you roll a little you, bit. You got back on there. You you tipped just keep over. Keep on going. Sometimes you just gotta start I'm over. Scrape your bruises. Come on, Howard. Let's get just get back up. Let's Shit. keep on pushing. Good thing this is one of our paid ones, man. Damn, oh, yeah, they're going to slice my check like, in mm-hmm. half. Sorry, I didn't like how you presented us. We didn't we didn't sound too great. Can't but lose one thing I do want to talk about is this. So I laughed. I laughed. So a lot of people were like, "Oh, Insecure is not coming out. Oh man, we got to wait till 2020." I'm like, "Ha ha ha! Third season sucked. Who cares? Get over it." They probably needed extra time for, you know, writing purposes. They didn't really give a clear detail on why it was delayed. A bunch of, like, you know, TV jargon talk. So I'm pretty sure they just needed to flesh out some stuff. Or uh, I think she Issa Rae was busy. Say, was, uh, I think she was busy, and, and that's the reason why they delayed it. But I laughed. I laughed for a while, and then the next day I saw that Westworld was delayed, and I cried. And I said, oh, this is this is how you smite me. You smite <laughs> me when I laugh at insecure people, and I have to wait <laughs> another year for uh, Westworld, and I think that's criminal. So what's the – well, what's his name? Um, the guy who plays Felix. Now, Felix is his character in Casino Royale. Yeah, right? I know you're talking about. Jeremy Wright is his name. Ah. I think that's his name, Jeremy Something Wright. Right. Yeah, I know he's in a bunch of different movies and TV series, so it, that might, it might have been some scheduling conflicts with that. They he said just it had was, that HBO documentary. They said uh, it was. Um, they needed. So apparently, the the running theme out there was that the first season was great. A lot of people took to it, but the second season was a little bit too much for a lot of people to digest. So they're gonna try to scale it back and try to be more. I guess explanatory of, of the story that they have going forward. Me personally, I thought season two was a step up on season one, and I feel like you just need to pay attention because it's. You, you okay, so season two is kind of jarring. Jeffrey Wright, that's his name. Jeffrey Wright, there you go. Season two is kind of jarring in the sense that I had a, like one or two episodes where I was watching it super late and I fell asleep, and I Wait, woke up in the middle. Of, 
Motherfucker, it was like 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Damn, 4 but, o'clock in the morning. No man, wonder why you fell bro, asleep. running your business keeps you up at weird times sometimes. Look at that. You heard that? Running your business. That's, yeah. that's that rich people talk. Okay. Hey, hey, Get your hey, bag, no. black man. No, whatever, dog. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, he just threw me off now. Wasn't I'm oh, sorry. So, but there were times where I'd like I'd zone out and come back in and have no idea where I was at. Because you got to pay attention, yeah, closely, and that's 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 a good thing and a bad thing. I see what you're talking but, about. But so I think though, what they should do is not focus so much on scaling it back. They should probably take it at a pace where there are not so many concurrent move like uh, line um, storylines in one episode. That that part gets a little distracting. But it kind of throws like, you out of it. I feel like the second season, it had to be the way it was to kind of throw people off so they wouldn't guess. I understand what they were doing, and I can yeah, you can't simplify it now some, and you can make it more linear where it's like it's easier to digest. But now that the second season out the way, I don't think they should have that problem with the third season. Well, I'll give you a primary example though. So take when they went to uh, spoiler, spoiler, show, spoiler, spoiler my ass. This is like what two years late now. Uh, it's still a spoiler. Shogun, uh, the Shogun world, right? Yeah. So they they, they show that. They didn't have to spend so many episodes in Shogun World I agree. for you to get the gist of, holy shit, it's the there's same. other worlds. Mm-hmm. Just like what they did with the, um, whatever, I guess, whatever the, the jungle one is in, uh, in India. I how they just put you there for a little bit, show, told the story, and then that's the last you heard of it. They should have done the same thing, I think. See, and I think that, I, I agree with you, because I did have a problem with that. And I was like, oh, that, this little summarized thing is kind of overplayed, but I understand yeah, what they, they did. They just took it. it way too far. They did it. So you can catch on that, oh, there's the same narratives that was kind of tweaked a little bit, and mm-hmm. now they're in each one of the parks, and they're kind of like the But they explained that to you right at the beginning. At the, and I was like, okay, like that's 10 good. minutes. Let's get out of here. This is Shogun World. For anybody who wants a little bit more violence. Okay, cool. Done deal. <laughs> same storylines as West 30 minutes World, long. But, man, that's whatever. It's, or spend the whole episode there. I mean, I enjoyed it. I mean, mm-hmm. that's cool. I understand people's critique of it. A lot of people kind of got lost interest and fell off, but it's all good. My only other thing with that is that they also should have done. All right, so like if you, they have like a, an Easter egg where you can go to the website mm-hmm. for Westworld mm-hmm. and go see they have a bunch of different other uh, worlds, worlds and stuff that aren't revealed. Mm-hmm. They should have done something to tease that a little bit more too. I think when they closed out the. I'm season. glad they're out of that hole. I'm glad we can. Uh, it's 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 the yeah. robots can take over now and kill all the humans. Uh, give it to me. I'm I'm ready for it. <laughs> All the humans, kill them all, kill them uh, all, burn them all, burn them. them. Somebody hurt you today? No, 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 too much Game of Thrones. You know, oh, I mean? I've been binge watching Game of Thrones, so I got the Mad King stuck in my head. Just burn all of them, burn all of them. All right, but yeah, man. And then other, in other news, Hellball, uh, Hellboy bomb. I mean, that's not really important. I it's, didn't even realize it came out. Until I did yesterday. Either. I totally forgot that it came it's out. It's sitting like a fifteen percent. Well, it must have been a fifteen percent type of movie because I sure didn't hear nothing about it. Were you a fan of the first two? I, the first one was cool. I thought it was something different. The second one I enjoyed a little bit more because they mm-hmm. explored, I guess, the Hellboy's world, and I thought that mm-hmm. the visuals were cool, the action scenes were cool. But it's just that whole Hellboy. A lot of these, what we were talking about earlier, is a lot of these movies I feel like are suited more for TV than they are for movie because movie like yeah. you said you're not given enough time to spend with the character so with Hellboy I feel like there's more to his backstory as well as more to you getting an understanding mm-hmm. and more of a Absolutely. connection with him that you do in a television uh, setting than you can with a movie because I can connect with a run a, a red dude in a bodysuit running around murking demons and stuff like that but well, if you explain it it would, it, make a, it would make like a good Marvel type show mm-hmm. where it's like you can see him going on different things trying oh there you go we got 13 percent. i mean he tomatoes. looks good he looks good yeah. I, I give him he that looks a whole he looks lot better than way uh, uglier than ron perlman right, ron perlman was out but, there looking like ron perlman yeah he looks like ron <laughs> red ron perlman i was like what are you doing dog what are you doing you got blood on still dripping from a yeah. blade, blade movie oh shit he wasn't that one the second hey, that was one. a good movie but Do the, you believe? the thing is though with this particular movie and the complexity of this character, it, it would be a whole lot better for it to be a series because now you don't have to rush through the fact that he's from hell or that mm-hmm. he's supposed to be bringing all, he's Semiel and all, bringing Semiel and all this stuff or whoever, whatever it was in the first one. And I think they keep – that's been the thing with all these movies. They always feel real rushed. And I've never really seen anybody be real fans of the first two Hellboys. And then to see people coming out saying, yo, I love the first one so much better than this one, I was like – I don't know if I'm going to see this movie now. And I was excited I, for it. I, I, I was excited about the trailer. Now that everybody said it sucked, I'm not going to watch it. Um, mm-hmm. It is what it is. Out of here. Boop, 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 boops. Yeah. Whatever. How much time we got, Mike, on left on Facebook Live? Shit, we're actually over already. We're good? 
Hey, well, you know what? We like to check with our engineers so we get it right, but yeah, we, we have to wrap up <laughs> intermission with y'all. Not because we don't have a clock right here or anything. Oh, but. yeah. It's all good. We, 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 we spent a little bit too much time with you, but if you tune in off air, you will see me and Howard in our interactions that we're going to have. Um, oh, it's about to get good. Oh, yeah, it's going to be good. I got a lot to say about this Game of Thrones, man. Game of Thrones. We're going to eat some sandwiches and drink some water and talk Game of Thrones. We got sandwiches? I don't know. Boy, I'm hungry. But, yeah, before you do that, don't forget to subscribe our show on all major platforms. Google Play, iHeartRadio, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, as well as YouTube. Like I said, catch those visuals that you're so accustomed to seeing on Facebook Live, as well as becoming one of our – you can be one of our donators, Patreon donator. You can be a one-time – one-time donation or you can become a monthly subscriber and what we have is we have a bunch of exclusive content coming to you reviews as i want to say some like two other tv shows that we're discuss discuss wanting to do and also it's a way for us to get some money and keep on the lights so we can keep coming live to y'all but uh howard you got anything else you want to say to the love people on facebook um even though marcus is being nice when he's saying for people who i am uh, nice give uh the one-time donations this is only for people with commitment issues i mean you guys want this content you know help us you gotta help us keep it going it's all good i mean we like the donations and we also we also like it that we can try to present y'all with something that that we can i want to say that y'all can be a part of to a certain extent and the platform just be able to give voice so that way you guys can see there's other people with opinions besides the typical ones. Yeah, the, the typical. Robert Eberts and all that stuff. Someone, there you go. You know what I mean. Go ahead and do it. You know what yeah. I mean. Give black voices. You know what I mean. We're actually talking. Uh, so one of uh, our buddies is actually a filmmaker. We're going to be bringing on the show. We were talking about this earlier. So uh, our goal is to keep on bringing you guys this good content. And that way you guys can have other representation out here. In yes, sir. Because as black people, show. we do watch other things than Insecure and I'm actually Black-ish. having a huge fan of Insecure, man. And Gronish. I love black. So. What are they, any more hate, black shows? Hate Gronish. Bye, y'all. Hate Gronish. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> Boy, you like you got the, the chipmunks running in your head. Hey, there, man. man. You're I'm, bouncing all I'm over the place. bouncing all over the place. So, how about we bounce all over to this Game of Thrones talk, man? All right. Let's get it out the gate. Game of Thrones dropped on Sunday, 8 o'clock. If you missed it, guess what? Sucks for you. We saw it. We were about to spoil it. So, <laughs> what do you think about the episode, Howard? I mean, it's exactly what I was expecting. You know, um, coming out the gate, we we know that Game of Thrones, their first episode is always about setting things up yeah. for the next season and tying things back from the old season. So I, I think they did a really good job of doing that. Um, there, there's some, a few critiques that we'll get into here in a minute. But other than that, I mean, I think it was exactly what it was supposed to be. Um, I was very satisfied, though, how it end, ended with uh, – the whole thing with Brandon, Jamie. Uh, Brandon, uh, yeah. uh, uh, um, Jamie looking at each other like, yeah. oh, shit. I think one of the best lines like from the episode. Me. Yeah. The best line, I think, from the whole episode was Jay, uh, John comes up to Brandon. He's like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, I'm waiting for an the old, old friend. friend. And you think he's waiting for whoever came Sam, after Sam. Sam, Sam kind of walking yeah. up. And then, but then you he's find out, man. nope, he's waiting for fucking Jamie. Yeah, and I, I was shocked. <laughs> I shocked, too, because someone, when he, when he was riding up on the, on a horse or whatnot, I kind of figured it was Jamie. I was like, oh, that's mm-hmm. Jamie. But when he, when he jumped off and he looked around and he was like, hey, man, guess who it is? It's like me. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's Jamie. But another thing that I like to say about this episode that I liked, I like, like you said, it connected to the old episode, mm-hmm. I mean, season one, as well as it became a... Oh, come on, Kristen, give us Yo, a cup. Oh, yeah. Look at that interruption. See, if you ain't watching on YouTube, you don't get to see this interruption of Kristen about to come on here and give us some alcohol so yeah. we can get this conversation to be a little bit more spicy. But um, <laughs> I enjoyed the episode. I thought Game of Thrones, I thought the first episode, if you are a Game of Thrones fan, you know the first episode, like you said, lays the foundation. Hey there, Kristen, what's going down? What's up? It's You're all about good. To be on it's camera. all good. It's we're, okay, not, we're not yeah. judging you. But yeah. on that first episode, I thought it was incredible yeah. because – Okay. They laid the foundation. Nah, I man, I drink this straight. It's fine. Oh, we yeah, we don't need no, nothing yeah. to mix with it. Just straight up, straight up. Cool. For the good people the out best. there, we're drinking Love some you. good Ciroc. Oh yeah. So if we get a little slur, you know, and, and we get a little all topic, that means that alcohol is popping. I wasn't expecting her to leave the whole bottle, but you know. Hey man, that's God. God is good. But let me get back to Game of Thrones and get my thought out. But yeah, it was awesome. I thought it was a good episode. I enjoyed the interactions. I enjoyed seeing a lot of characters uh, meet. Once again, with Arya and like John, or you mm-hmm. know Sam and Bran, back to there because I think I like those those two when they have the dialogue because whenever they talk, you know something important is about to you know take place. Yo, that that dialogue between her and Gendry, Arya and Gendry. Oh yeah, oh talk, man, it reminded me of the old. So if, if for some of y'all, I'm gonna give you a little callback. So when Gendry 
was leaving with the the Brotherhood Without Banners, he said that I don't want you to be my friend. I want you to be my queen. So it was just really interesting to see her. She was blushing over him a little bit. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I need you to make this for me. But she came with some bars. Yeah, though. she did. Came with some bars. <laughs> she was like, I'm the only rich girl. Yeah, you I'm know. the only rich girl. You know, you you broke. Bro, bitch. Yeah, man. She just, Arya, though, uh, that, she's probably my favorite character of the she whole thing. She is my favorite. She she's, is my favorite. She keeps she, the gangster, dude. She's the type of person, because once again, uh, the, the great thing about Game of Thrones is they s- establish these characters, and you think they're one way, and they end up developing them to turn out another way. Mm-hmm. So with Arya, we saw how she was like, oh, this little girl, that little tomboy, whatnot, but she's fully fledged, became you know, a killer. And I, yeah. I didn't see this, you know, in the first episode. And so let's dive a little bit. Let's dive a little bit into this episode. I want to name some things. I want you to tell me some things that you didn't like about this episode. Uh, and then we'll just get into spoiler territory and break down a few more things that I think that should be fleshed out. What you didn't like about this episode? So I could have done without the romance, that romantic little dragon flying thing they were doing. John mm. and, and uh, mm. Daenerys. And I do think it did something really important. And that was point out something that and this is my own thing all right i think eventually john's gonna have to kill daenerys and there's a line that she said and that was we could stay here for a thousand yep. years mm-hmm. that's the exact same shit that uh what's her name uh john's first chick oh yara oh now yara no yeah. um yeah. i can't remember her name not the redhead yara. the wildling yeah. that's the first not yara yeah, it y- is yara no yara is uh theon's sister oh that is yara yeah, i'm yeah. tripping uh egret egret well, that's the exact same thing that you she, know not she said to him, though. and then boop. Yeah, she did get killed, yeah. so that means that Daenerys probably going to get He didn't kill off. her, actually. He, she was no, supposed to. No, it was to. His, that little young bastard yeah. that killed yeah. him. I so, him. I think, my only thing is that I think they're making that just a little bit too, like, uh, too girl, uh, I don't want to say girl, but too, like, rom-com-ish type thing where he's like, oh, look, we have this beautiful budding love affair happening. When... I don't really want to see that. That And it's just, it just he came, off, he came across just a little bit cheesy. But other than that, eh. I like it. I liked it. I, I liked it because, I, 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 liked it because like. I feel like this is it shows you once again that he's a Targaryen because only the Targaryens can ride the dragons. So that's the yeah. thing that I liked about it. So leading it showed, up to it, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the only reason why I like that scene because it was just like for those people that don't know and may probably want to explain. I don't know. Hopefully, they do that only Targaryens can ride the mm-hmm. dragon. So I thought that was very significant. What else did you know like? No, that was it. But, oh, that was but I'll tell you one thing, though, that I did notice, and that was that Drogon. Um, oh, he was mad. Was, no, I don't think that's what that was. Oh, he's like, oh, you're I think he's, he's looking at John as if he's the one who should be riding Yeah, you're me. supposed to be riding me, dog. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm hey, the did leader. He ride, didn't he ride it? No, he rode. Um, um, Viseria? No, not Viseria. It was it Viseria? Yeah, the, the brother. Viserion. Yeah, Viserion. Viserion. Yeah. Viserion. Whatever one of them. Is. One yeah. of them, fools. Or I thought it was, was Rhaegar. No, Viserion's the one that's Rhaegar. 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 Yeah. So, which is interesting because that's his, uh, isn't that his dad's name? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's wor- he's riding the dragon. The dragon that's his dad. Made up his yeah. dad. Yeah. So, yeah. Get on me, John. Let's, yeah. let's ride and fuck some shit up. So I think that's interesting. But, um, so that, that part of like, well, one of the coolest things I thought about this whole thing was that, um, how they played that scene out with, they didn't make us wait the entire series for John to find this shit out. And then for them to have it on just John the whole time, now, that was pretty question. cool. Now let's get a little let's get a little hype here. So in season one, when John is going to the wall and Ned is going to King's Landing, he says he they're discussing about the, his lineage, and he's like, "Who is my mom?" or whatever. And Ned was like, "I'm going to tell you about your mm-hmm. your your uh, your mother next time I see you." Isn't it ironic that he's standing right next to Ned's statue when yeah. Sam is like, "You you you're not his son." And I was like, "Oh shit!" Like yeah, yeah. Like, wait, that's pretty powerful just to see like, and to see John. I think people don't. The thing I like about Game of Thrones is you don't have to say too much to com- um, emote a, uh, a feeling on mm-hmm. there. And you could tell John like felt the weight of that. Like, yeah. like yo, like you trying to say my dad lied to me? And then Sam was like, no, like Robert would have killed your ass. Yeah. Like, it's- See, and that's one of the things I think they do. They've done all. They've always done a really good job of. It's like they let you fill in the gaps of what's going on. Exactly. And, and then I feel like that really draws you in a little bit more into the show. Uh, it draws you. 
that draws you in and like the show just a little bit more makes you feel that that emotion a little bit more and it, it has that connection so it does and but it, that's also the exact reason why I thought that that love scene between them was so cheesy I didn't feel that it just felt like it was like it felt like it was there. out of Game yeah. of Thrones um, character to yeah, do something it, like it that it felt like some, you, some shit you'd see on Disney like, thank they you Elijah just they pass it over here yeah it wasn't um, thank you sir they're really just trying like like when you see like for instance um Cersei and Jamie's whole thing like you can see that there's like a, there's real issues involved with this shit but that one it just seemed very very Disney see to me. I'm not okay so this one thing I won't do I will not look at an episode in I'm not saying you say you even what you did was even a critique mm-hmm. I'm not going to knock anything because everything serves its purpose because even in in the last season the last season I wanted to criticize a, a couple of things a couple of things that they were going, they were doing. Uh, there was I can't really pinpoint it right now at the top of my head, but there was a certain thing that bothered me about the last season mm-hmm. that I didn't like, where it was like Gendry running like you know that that, oh, that, that whole script. shit in like five but minutes. But it's just like for <laughs> yeah. the story purposes, it worked and it was mm-hmm. cool, and it became less of a critique after I watched season seven all the way through again. I was like, oh, you know what? It doesn't bother me that much. But on this one scene, it kind of stood out. But when I watched it as a full episode, I was like, okay, you know what? I take it for what it is. But uh, another thing that I liked about this episode is the interaction, like you said, with Arya and Gendry, as well as Arya and the Hound. I'm glad they didn't have too much of a back and forth, like, oh, you killed me. Fuck you. I hate you. But it was just like an understanding. But you still see in Arya's face that she still doesn't trust mm-hmm. the Hound for whatever reason. I mean, you know, because he was, he was good to her. She felt that shit. And he was like, when she's like, I robbed you first. And he's like, you did. Yeah. And then he walked off. You can see she cracked that little smile. You know yeah, he's, yeah, he, she, he's she, off the she list. Knows, she, 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 he's off the list. He got crossed off. Mm-hmm. And another thing that I, uh, uh, I like about this episode is just the 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 play between Daenerys and Sansa. You just see that so much growth in Sansa so as a character. Much. Sansa's gotten she's, so much better she's, of character. She's got that Cersei in her because you saw how she's like, yeah. protect my family. I got to protect my family. I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Now you want to protect your family, but yeah. you want to – throw Arya under the bus and was like I, I didn't see it I didn't see him attack you remember on the first season when uh, well, her but dog we, we also gotta remember though that Arya girl, was know. like I mean uh, Sansa, Sansa at the time was like 10 years old and like it, 13 it was, but still 13 okay, you got some, you got and that's another right. thing to take into account like when you're looking at this like John's like in his late teens talked about 20s. that on the show last week yeah. I said that it, it moves crazy. their emotional weight sometimes because you look at John he's like oh that's a grown 30 year old yeah, man like but 18, he's like, 19, mm, slicing 19 slicing up these zombies making up ex- and it also plays to another thing that I don't. I mean, I like about the show. I wish they explore more. Is that that uh, the age gap or whatever for you to believe it? That means the 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 missteps that they do. It makes sense because they're so young. So when mm-hmm. I'm looking at so John doing learning, like stupid yeah. stuff, I'm like oh, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like 33, John. Get some, get your act right, man. Yeah. But I'm like, oh yeah, you're only 19. I remember when I was 19, I was still illegally downloading shit and ready to get the fuck out of here, but, you know, it's what it is. One of my favorite things, though, is seeing, um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this, how this plays out, is that uh, how strong of a character Sansa is now, how it's going to play out for this, because I honestly think she's going to make a play for the I think throne. she's going to become the Lady of Winterfield. I think she's going to make a play for the Iron Throne. I hope not. I hope not. Why not? I want her to die, because I don't, Sansa, you don't deserve it. You don't Are you see kidding it. me? She, she's, she's been, been over, through so much But you know what? Shit. If you go back and you watch them all season, Sansa put herself in a lot of those situations. I'm going to tell no. you right now. Because she could have left with the Hound and been done at the... Uh, you just pointed out something that was really important, though, about that. Like you, like you said, she's young. These missteps she made, she was like 13 at the time. Mm, uh, yeah, I, I, I give it to you. There's some things that I, I there's some other questionable mm-hmm. things, but I understand she has been through a lot. It's 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 amazing to see that a lot of these people have the claim for the throne. Well, not claim for the throne, but they've been through enough struggle that they can be like, man, fuck this, I deserve to lead these people or whatnot. So it's gonna be interesting how Jamie gonna fare with the whole in the next episode with a lot of like, hey, you oh, killed my man. daddy. Hey, yeah, you killed my daddy. Speaking of that though, go for it. The fact that he's now in Winterfell with all these people that he's fucked over. Yeah. And on top of that. Cersei sent Braun after them with that crossbow. See, I don't think Braun's going to kill. Braun is not going to kill. Braun's not going to kill. But Someone's I think that's going to be the linchpin that makes Jaime kill well, Cersei. Cersei. That's going to be the chance. Mm-hmm. Because, like the prophecy said in the book, and people say, oh, it's not a show, but whatever. Uh, when he's like, uh, Cer- he tells Cersei, he tells, the witch tells Cersei's that Cersei that one of your, I mean, that your younger brother's going to kill you. And she always thought it was Tyrion, so that's mm-hmm. why she was always so mad. But, she, you know, taking the fact that Jamie was born like um, a minute minutes after, like, yeah, mm-hmm. minutes before or whatever. 
I mean, after. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how that dynamic plays. And, you yeah. know, when Braun coming up and say, oh, well, Cersei really, she really bought that life now, huh? Okay, mm-hmm. cool. I'm going to go murk up myself. And it's cool, too, because, like, Braun tried to put that whole thing with the Tyrion, like, oh, I'm only doing this for the money, money. and all this. But you know good and damn well he's Braun is, has more character depth than that. Because he's – and another thing with Braun is he's came out the trenches because of him. It's because, like, because of Tyrion – Braun is at the level that he's at exactly. because he's like, come help me or whatnot. Yeah, exactly. But uh, before we continue this discussion, though, we're going to shout out another one of our sponsors Shout out, here. shout out, shout out. This portion of the, sponsor of the show is sponsored by Lady Irie Natural Hair Care. Have a kinky, curly style in mind? Lady Irie Natural Hair Care has been a prime destination for catering to naturally kinky hair in Houston, Texas, and beyond for over five years. Clients come from all over the world to receive the ultimate experience for their natural hair care needs. Lady Irie Natural Hair Care has been featured on media outlets including Young Black Professional Magazine, GMT Internet and Radio, The Sphere, and more. Your unique vision can be brought to life complete with helpful tips for maintaining your, your, your hair. Excuse me. You'll walk into the salon with the warmest of greetings, complimentary refreshments, and knowledgeable stylists that promote total beauty from the inside out. Our goal is to unveil your kinks one curl at a time. Give the experts a call today at 832-265-3792 or book online at ladyirie.com. It's L-A-D-Y-A-R, or excuse me, A-Y-R-I. Yeah, go get your hair done. Go get your hair looking fly, looking fly, looking fly. Yes. But, uh, yeah, that's... That's pretty much it for Game of Thrones. Uh, there was not so, a lot. There's not a lot to deep dive into or break yeah, down. That's a very surface level. Episode, it's, it, was, it was. It was. It's not too much up. meat in there. But another thing that I what? Go ahead, finish. Another right, thing that I was watching this well, week. Oh, you are about to pass off? And get yeah. Those? All right. So let me ask you this then before we go. Because who do you think? What do you? What do you? What's your prediction for the next episode? Like, who do you think is gonna be the first person be, to get killed? I'm gonna be honest with you. I I, I didn't even want to put that much thought into it. I, okay. I literally said the Game of Thrones and, and the Avengers, I'm not going to put much thought into it because I want to psych it. myself out. Huh? It's a good way to approach it. I don't want to psych myself out because I'm going to psych myself out to the point of being disappointed because sometimes mm, I can concoct you know, some shit far. in my head yeah. that is like, whoa, blows my mind. And then all of a sudden I see the episode, I'm like, what the fuck? This ain't nothing. I think that little symbol, that old little umber was pinned to, mm-hmm. that's going to mean something because that's it been popping be. up. It's always well, been popping so up. So here's the thing. Have uh, you noticed it kind of looks like the... The sigil for the Targaryens. There's another one earlier in the season where, when they're first going into Dragonstone, or Dra- yeah, Dragonstone Island, whatever the hell it's called, and they go in the little Dragonstone, cave, and they have that symbol on the, there, and then there's another the carbon symbol. on the wall. Yeah, but then there's one where it looks like they're paired together. So I wonder if that has anything to do with them and, and uh, Daenerys and Jon Snow, or Jon Snow being the one, you know. Or just like a little message, or maybe it's the hand. white, maybe it's the White Walkers trying to, you know, do a little Mor- Morris Cole, like, hey, John, I'm coming to fucking kill everybody. Yeah. What does this symbol mean? I'm like, you should do your White Walker dialect. You'll know what that ah! means. It means run. <laughs> <laughs> but um, also before uh, I know we're getting off of Game of Thrones, uh, we have a little shorter show, so we're gonna get to these trailers. But before we get to this trailer, right quick, um, I want to say that I saw <laughs> How to Train Your Dragon three. I thought it was amazing good for the kids i think it was a great way to wrap up the series i think it's probably one of the best of the three that's not saying a lot and i would like to give a lot of shout out and credit to how to train a dragon for a series that i expected nothing of but getting the most out of and i think it's one of the best animated uh, series um out so go check it out trying to train a dragon three check it out what's going on stranger what's up traitor 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 but we got mike yeah all right so this trailer we're about to run right here is the one that psyched all you players out in the world. Star Wars. Do, 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 do. Did you were you hype about Star Wars? Hell yeah. Um, I'm happy because it's JJ Abrams coming back. Yeah. And it's the end of a of a saga. So I'm so glad it's in. I'm so sick of the a Star uh, Skywalker. I'm sick of uh, it's one of these things I'm kind of reluctant to watch because the last two have been such a letdown. I did not like that last one. And then no, it seeing it right, I'm going to be honest with you. Let's keep it a buck. I'm a, I'm a surface level type of dude. I love Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I'm a huge fan of the can- I'm like the lore of Star Wars, the backstory of Star, Star Wars. These movies, I feel like, can be better made. 
to make people more interested. Yeah, there, there's something weird. It's like the lore the of them is better yeah. than what I've seen on screen. I, I don't know if it's like if it's missing the action or the character it's not, development. It's not or, even the actors themselves. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not even mad at. Like, is a character development? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm missing that on a lot of that. I feel like it's one of those things where it's like they have. Like they build up to something that it should be. Like take for instance the Emperor Snoke thing, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. That they was build it up, down. build it up, and then they just it falls flat. He dies like so easily. Yeah. I like that jump she did. Yeah, that's nice pretty. Cool. It shows that she's being this more depth force now, which is cool. Coming to a theater near you. But like I, I think what it is is they, they don't go far Storm enough with who, who they're working with. Like yeah. I mean, we had that whole like thirty minute Billy runoff Demons. on the. Uh, on the last one, when they go to the little casino planet, when they could have taken that time to focus oh, more on about, developing oh, that was so snow. It goof. made no sense. That was so was goofy. Pointless. Totally pointless. And like, I want character development. I want to care about these characters. I don't care yeah. about... N- Not one of them. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. If you want to keep it a book... The you Death can- Star, baby. On in the ocean. If you go back and you look at all the old Star Wars movies, and I really, hey, guess what? If you want to hit me up and you want to say, McGriff, guess what? You don't know what the hell you talking about. Fuck you. I'm going to tell you something right now. The character development in Star Wars is ass water. Like, oh yeah, they're not that great. Of Luke movies. is not a compelling character. Stop lying to me. Uh, Han Solo is not. They can be developed so much better. It, they give you surface level stuff, and I think it's mm-hmm. okay. Game of Thrones, Westworld, Breaking Bad, things of like nature have spoiled me to the point where I can just look at something like, "Hey, I didn't get enough out of you." And a so, lot of those movies, I didn't get enough out of. To that point, I think. Part of it is that, because I agree with you wholeheartedly on that, I actually have more fun in reading the stuff online about mm-hmm. Star Wars than actually watching the Star Wars. The lore is better than the and, actual thing. Yeah, and I think what it is is that for the time that we grew up in, we expect more from characters. True. We're not like the flashy, like, like it, cause it's a totally innovative type story. Mm-hmm. But, and for it to be a space opera and all that, but the thing is, is that, like you said, they don't dive deep enough into the characters. And I think that... Uh, episodes one, two, and three tried to do something like that. Yeah, and it then, was then terrible. It went way, oh, yeah. way that, too far. That romantic yeah. element between Anakin and that stuff was overplayed. Padme was, <laughs> but they keep, they do something really that I've noticed uh, with their villains. The same issues that we talk about with Marvel. You had Darth Maul was one of the most Rich. interesting characters. Ten minutes on screen yeah. and dead. But if you go to the Clone Wars, and he's on there. He's, he's a, yeah. exploring. And you're like, shit, like, yeah. this dude is really wrong. You start talk, going to his home planet, talking about his, seeing his brother, stuff. all this shit. And so I think they, and it goes back to the whole thing with movies and TV shows, they fleshed it out a whole lot more with the TV show. And they just keep falling flat because they try to cram so many things into, into the one movie. thing. Yeah. So just focusing on the main plot lines. Let's explore these main characters and do that. So, me personally, I'm, I'm excited to see how they're going to. How J.J. Abrams is going to put a bow on this because the Skywalker name has gone to this whole thing where it doesn't really matter anymore. Like maybe they're going to wrap it up and change it instead of having Jedi. They're going to have the Skywalker priest or whatever. They're trying know, to say gonna more be. is like Skywalker going to become a title. I'm just like yeah. whatever. We'll see. And, but and even then though, that would be kind of lame. Yeah, very I, lame. Uh, and I don't want them. To, but I also and then the don't want Ray. I'm just like so. Whatever. Here's here's a point though to. that I thought about though. Maybe it's not actually back, but in the same way. And I was reading something about, like, how – the title was, How is Luke so dumb? Force Ghost. Force Ghost. Yeah, that one. Force Ghost. Ah, that's still but lame to me. But the main way you slice it, though, anything we can come up with is going to be fucking lame because they spilled, on the execution. Because they spent five years building this lame-ass continuation, and that's the, my problem. Yeah. But neither here nor there, whatever. And the only, and the only reason is, is that because you the first two-thirds of this whole shit was – Oh look, we have Snoke here. So it's a continuation, but it's going in a different direction, only to just double back and say, "Oh fuck, Snoke!" Now we have Palpatine back. I'm, I'm, I'm Billy D. Williams is here. Yeah, be happy, Billy okay. B. There. So we haven't seen him in forever. If it ends up, and J.J. Abrams doesn't really care too much about this last uh, sequel, so uh, it feels like it's going to just be a nice be done with yeah, type it's, thing it's, it's over there's gonna be a lot of unanswered questions a lot of a lot of let's, sloppy let's go ahead and, and, kind of and let's just let so, star wars just be what go it ahead is and die is. start over let's explore some new characters let's look at some I'm other ready. shit like follow maul like that would be so great to have like just a series just looking at maul and his I people would, i would like that I or would, more be, on the force or i want shit. just something just uh, well they got the knights of old republic so just give me that because yeah. that's that's more compelling or like the more. old jedi like the great jedi and that's all what that I'm saying. that's yeah, the old yeah. going. Well, what's the one with the um before they were called jedi when they were, it's it, it's something like the first i don't know it's some shit i saw on the internet but 
something. We had, we had two other trailers that we're going to show you, but for, because of time, honestly, we don't got to show these trailers. We had an X Men trailer that came out. Mm. You can watch it on your own. It spoils everything. The action looks great. Do not great. watch it. Oh, if, yeah. you, if you don't want to see the, if you uh, if you're excited about this movie, don't Look, watch the trailer. If you watch the first two trailers, I'm pretty sure you might as well watch this one because they all spoil everything. You spend 15 minutes, yeah. you watch all three trailers, and you've watched you the watch whole the whole movie. But and then also there's a Avengers trailer to get you hyped up um, for the Avengers coming out. That's you know I'm pretty sure they were all hyped about. You don't really yeah. it don't spoil anything. It just gets you hyped up and it's showing you that. The evolution of each one of these characters, which I still think, you know, it's been poo, but it could be better. <laughs> you know, Captain America may be the most fleshed Amazing. out. Amazing. He's the most fleshed out, but uh, go check out Endgame. We're going to do a spoiler for that. I can't wait for that. that, that I can't wait for protect that. Protect yourself. Oh, yeah, though, protect yourself. They have people, people have leaked mm -hmm. out some content on Tell there. Them Don't read any comment do sections. Do not read. Right? Do not read. Me personally, I'm not going to talk to anybody online because I'm not going to see the movie until probably the week, next week. Mm -hmm. I got to go to fucking New Orleans. Oh, so. so he's going to be hiding. So unless I go see it out there, which I'm gonna be drinking way too much to. Yeah, get touched up, there. man. Well, hey, hey I'll go out there for. New Orleans, man, I'm, yeah, I'm visiting my family, man. So we're going out there for a wedding. So Anthony Davis out there and say screw him, screw you, Anthony Davis, Mr. Brown. But yeah, before we end up the show, let me. Uh, we have to get this ad off. So sit tight with us. Pew pew. This portion of the show is uh, sponsored to you by Houston Housewives of Finance. Did you know that four states in the United States offer financial education? 33% don't pay their bills on time, 39% of Americans carry credit card debt for month to month, and 39% of adults don't have enough in savings. Don't become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on keep increasing your cash flow and become your own money manager by scheduling your own complimentary financial strategy. Uh, comp uh, contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463 or email them at info at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. Ask us how you can participate in a complimentary uh, workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new face of the new ages of financial services. Man, it's been a good show, man. It's been a really dope show. Um, we talked about some dope things that you should have enjoyed. We enjoyed y'all for tuning in and, and listening to us and hear what our takes had to be. How are you got anything you want to tell the good people on this rainy night in Houston? Man, stay dry. Drive safe out there. Um, I'm about to start watching American Horror Story. I finally ah. I watched... One season and it got uh, you hooked. Yeah, the cult one, and I, and I'm pissed because oh boy, who plays uh, Quicksilver and X Men is in there. He's such a great fucking actor. Oh yeah, he's, he's, he's good. so good. But um, and then he's but he's not gonna be in the next season. Evans Peters, so, that's his name. Yeah, Evan Peters. So um, I mean I'm gonna be catching up on that. So and and watching all that shit. So I mean I say bundle up, stay. Stay dry and watch some good content. Be hell next hell yeah. And then the Rockets play tonight. Game two. Let's get Woo. it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Rockets to the finals. Hey, thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, y'all have a great day. Intermission. Thank you for taking a break with us. Deuces. <laughs>